A Testament Against the World, The Lord's Rebuke. I shall be terrible unto them. April 25th, 2011. From the Lord our God and Savior. For all those who have ears to hear. Thus says the Lord against the accursed generation. I shall be terrible unto them. For they push out the hand against my speech and treat my prophets as though they were babbling mouthpieces which speak lies, knowing nothing, casting them off without cause. Though it is I, even I, who fills their mouths with the word of truth and their hearts with the knowledge of the Holy One. Therefore, I shall not cease from causing my servants to prophesy, rising up early and sending them. I have put my words in their mouths. I have opened their ears so they may hear. For I shall cause my words to be a terror unto all peoples. For it is my spirit which has come to reside in my witnesses, says the great Yahuwah, the word of God who speaks, Yahushua. And because of all these blasphemies, by which this arrogant people have blasphemed my word and my glory without ceasing, shall they be made to suffer. Much wailing, a multitude of tears. Tears shall be for their drink when they thirst in the morning. They shall have sorrow for their meals at noontime, and pain shall be for their bed at night. For all their disobedience is made plain. It is always before my face, shown up in their rebellion. Lo, they shall soon come to abhor all their adulteries against me. Every last one of them, says the Lord. Yet first, the falling away. Lo, even some shall run from me. Many shall depart from me. And when they tire, when they finally fall down and repent, then shall they turn and run from all their perverse transgressions which they had committed at noontime. And when they realize that indeed it was I who had pursued them, and it was I who had brought them back, then, oh, how they shall love my Sabbaths, and of my holy days these they shall cherish. In those days, ten men from every language of the nations shall lay hold on one Jew, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Fear not, my servants, nor be swallowed up over much sorrow because of all these captive children. For my mercy shall not altogether depart from them. And though they remain prisoners in this world, they are greatly beloved of the Lamb. For if I do not correct them for their disobedience, truly I say to you, they may never enter into my rest. Therefore have peace, O sons of service. For my own power has come to reside in you, and shall cause you to prophesy. And though you are suddenly weakened, nothing is awry, for you have submitted yourself to my power, having made room for the Holy One to come in. And he shall surely come to dwell within you fully in due season. The power of my presence has always caused my prophets to be set apart in the holy, to feel as though they would wither, as though they would die. For indeed, it is a death of another kind. And those who do not know me need to depart from my chosen, taking with them all their ignorant chatter by which they clamor against my servants continually, having no real knowledge of the truth. For they have provoked me to anger. My jealousy is aroused. For I am indeed very jealous over my servants. And my passion is shown in my zeal over all these who have cast away their filthy robes. For they shall surely receive new robes from me, robes of white in my sanctuary. 
let all who are in my favor taste and see that the Lord is good. Says he who is faithful, he who is true. And all those who refuse to know me, who hold fast to hate and strive hard in their rebellion, whose hearts are as adamant stones, refusing to be broken, resisting always my correction, and shutting their mouths tight against repentance. These shall also come to realize that they too were created for my glory, to reveal the power of my might. Vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. And no matter how much incense they burn to their idols, no matter how many possessions they own, or how much money they lay hold of and shove down their wide necks, congesting their throats to their own destruction, I will be glorified. My power shall be made known. For I am sickened by all their conduct. Over and over they pierce the Holy One with spears of many sorrows as they endeavor to pin their king to the tree again and again, as though letting him hang high was not enough for them. Therefore shall my voice continually persecute them until the consummation. And the sorrow shall be great throughout every land, growing deeper and deeper among every people. The seven thunders shall roar at them, and they shall not escape, except by martyrdom, says the Lord. Behold, my people, look upon this great city, which I love, this great city called martyrdom. I call you to drink, drink of his blood, all you high-minded. His blood shall bring you low enough to pass through. Low enough to enter in. And to those of you who continually provoke your God to anger, who cease not from testing me as Israel tested me in the desert forty years, I call you to repent in truth with many tears, to return, that I may receive you. And if you refuse, I call you to drink to drink fully from this cup I am about to pour out, that you may choke on it and die, that you may be no more before my face, with your wicked ways far removed, your detestable speech silenced, that you may rest from all your evil, by which you have greatly wearied yourselves. For you have caused me much grief, I am acquainted with much sorrow on your account. O oh, my people, who are not my people, you refuse me and seek not to know me as I am. Lo, the man of sorrows has become a prince and now a king. The king of sorrows! Heaven is filled with my tears from one end to the other. Therefore am I come out, and from a cup of wrath, which is poured out without mixture, am I come to purify and to cleanse. Drink, all you wicked. A raging fire is prepared. It waits for you. It awaits all who have proven themselves worthy of its flame, altogether worthy to be blotted out, refuse to be tossed away and burned up. Yes, you have proven yourselves fully worthy and meet for destruction, vessels of great dishonor taking pleasure in all your evils, in all your slaughter, in all your falsehoods and lies, in all your immoral behavior. Superfluity of naughtiness overwhelms your minds in the daytime and fills your bellies at night. You shall all surely die, for this is your due reward, says the Lord.
O peoples of the earth, take heed and wail loudly, for the face of the Almighty has waited eagerly for the time. Lo, it is time, and I shall send him into the house as a thief, to rob and to gather. He shall snatch them away, and from you they shall be taken. My faithful children, both awake and those asleep, whose lives were not their own, lives given up, then received anew on account of him, in whom they had placed all their trust, and did not waver, for love has saved them. Therefore, keep watch, for you know not the time of the Lord's return, whether it be in the first, or in the second, or in the third watch of the night. You know not the time. You know not the day or the hour. Therefore I declare to you, all your setting of dates shall come to nothing, and all your precise predictions shall fail. For I may take them before or after, for I am God. The first election is made, the time of bundling is past, and those who stand outside the gate have already begun their clamor, and cease not from their complaints, for I know them not. Even so. Amen. Behold, a cloud is risen in the west, the hard rain is come, and who shall prevent it as it draws near, or hinder it when it arrives? The wind blows in the east, yet who is aware of it until it has overtaken them? Says the Lord. <laughs>